Welcome to the European Heart Journal uh, video update at the Cardiology Update uh, 2017 in Davos. My name is Christian Matter. I'm a professor of cardiology in Zurich at the University Hospital. Uh, my research focuses on atherosclerosis and uh, acute coronary syndrome. And I'm very pleased and honored to have a friend of mine here. Uh, Professor Christian Müller, who is the head of uh, inpatient clinic and a world top expert in biomarkers and outcome research. Christian uh, will talk about the guidelines in non-STEMI of the ESC. Can you wrap up uh, in a, a nutshell the key novel findings uh, to which you contributed? With great pleasure. So Christian, First of all, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, this whole endeavor was uh, led by Marco Roffi, who chaired uh, the task force of about 20 experts and uh, did a fantastic job to really uh, bring together the expertise in the group. And I think uh, his uh, really uh, great chairmanship allowed uh, this guideline uh, to become as successful um, uh, as it was. Um, I think it's fair to argue, uh, to say that um, the 2015 guideline is really a very nice uh, extension of the previous one published in 2011. So all major concepts um, that uh, were uh, key in the 2011 uh, document are also still valid in the 2015 one, with of course uh, some new evidence uh, that had become available now clearly integrated and uh, trying to um, highlight to clinicians uh, what are the new aspects that uh, we should focus on in clinical patient care. Beautiful. Can you sketch uh, us the, the key points, biomarkers, I that's your field? or you certainly contributed uh, markedly to it, arrhythmia, access uh, issues. Uh, can you quickly uh, show that for us, sure. what is new? So I think the, the new guideline has seven novelties, so seven key aspects uh, relevant for patient care. The first one is that uh, for the first time, we clearly highlight that the two phenotypes commonly summarized under the term an acute coronary syndrome, unstable angina on the one hand and NSTEMI on the other, do have marked differences uh, regarding pathophysiology, so cardiomyocyte damage being present only in NSTEMI, mm -hmm. risk of death and major arrhythmias really largely only in NSTEMI, but also regarding the benefit from our therapeutic interventions, so the benefit from early revascularization and the benefit from an intense platelet therapy is by far more pronounced in the NSTEMI patients as compared to unstable if appropriately diagnosed using high sensitivity cardiac troponin. So I think that's, that's for sure the first major um, novelty. Yeah. The second is uh, related to that a diagnostic process, which is strongly linked to risk stratification. And again, so the new document um, confirms the three hour uh, approach as a very good uh, approach on how to combine uh, physical uh, examination, clinical assessment, the ECG and uh, cardiac troponin as uh, the biomarker. Uh, that's uh, again a confirmation that uh, we should use a high sensitivity assay. Uh, this is a class one recommendation now and it has already been a class one recommendation in the previous version. So what is new is that we now uh, were able to propose an even more rapid algorithm to be more rapid uh, in either rule in or rule out yeah. with an, a one hour approach. So the vast majority of patients can be ruled out or ruled in with blood uh, drawn at presentation at one hour. So that's the second uh, novelty. Um, the third one um, I think is also of key importance. It's related to the need, uh, the duration of rhythm monitoring. So very practical aspect which has uh, uh, for the first time received uh, appropriate um, um, specification and so uh, it's clear that patients uh, who have a, uh, unstable angina and uh, really no uh, additional chest pain episode and no elevation in uh, troponin during serial sampling that these patients can be more, uh, um, uh, treated outside uh, CCU yeah. settings so on a regular ward 
And patients with NSTEMI, kind of the small uncomplicated NSTEMI, for them 24 hours is fine in a CCU or a monitored unit setting, and a complicated NSTEMI uh, should be kept for, for about 48 hours. So this was number three, uh, yeah. the, 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 the rhythm monitoring. Um, then, of course, our uh, uh, pharmacological treatment um, has uh, matured a bit. Uh, uh, so still anti dual antiplatelet therapy is, of course, uh, key. We have been a bit more cautious regarding the, the wording, regarding when to initiate it, uh, because really there's no convincing evidence to guide us uh, when to initiate. So the argument in the group was we should do it as it was done in the phase three studies that showed outcome benefit, particularly for ticacrylor. So we have free antiplatelet drugs available with at least uh, some preference uh, for ticacrylor having um, the best data. Regarding anticoagulation, um, uh, the most uh, uh, important novelty is uh, a new scheme uh, to try to provide some guidance on the very tricky issue of how to balance uh, efficiency and uh, safety exactly. uh, in patients uh, in need for oral co uh, co uh, coagulation due to um, um, uh, AFib. So I think that uh, that's, that scheme I think has. Uh, um, or nicely summarize the, the current uh, uh, yeah. thinking, and as you of course um, addressed uh, uh, the timing of early uh, revascularization. Uh, with, uh, I mean, many most patients will benefit from early revascularization, and the actual timing depends on the severity of the of, of the syndrome. So, yeah. the more high risk features present, the more unstable the situation, the earlier patients yeah. have to go to the cath lab. And as you addressed, uh, now um, the radial approach um, is clearly favored, uh, particularly uh, due to the data, the matrix data and the, the meta-analysis. Yeah. Yeah. The safety issues with the bleeding. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps the last point uh, that uh, I think deserves attention, uh, now, uh, with the data from Improve It available, um, uh, Ecetimide uh, has received uh, a 2A recommendation uh, in patients not uh, uh, at LDL target uh, on high, high dose uh, statins. Yeah, so that very nicely uh, summarizes the recent developments in the past couple of years. Uh, where with the biomarkers you have con uh, contributed substantially the radial access that has become close to standard at most tertiary centers and the better understanding of high versus low risk patients this dual antiplatelet therapy anticoagulation issue uh, where people are concerned about safety that is a key issue where do you see the obstacles in implementing these guidelines uh, into practice because we very often have the guidelines and we have the communication of the guidelines and we have the implementation of the guidelines where you see the challenges. There. Absolutely, I think you're absolutely uh, right. So implementation now must be, of course, uh, the, the focus. And uh, therefore, again, I'd like to give uh, enormous credit to Marco Roffi, who came up with the idea to have free accompanying documents, yep. case-based uh, description on to provide guidance, what really the specific recommendation means and how they can be implemented on a specific case uh, uh, presentation. So I think these documents are, are one um, key aspect to improve implementation. Uh, but the obstacles for sure uh, will remain in particular in those areas where more than one specialty needs to be involved to change something. And usually uh, that's the diagnostic aspect. So uh, it's where uh, expertise from cardiology expertise from emergency medicine and often expertise from laboratory medicine needs to come together uh, when a hospital uh, wants to change uh, its uh, algorithm and come up with a new approach. So therefore it's of course important uh, also to provide guidance and help to institutions that want to uh, make this kind of best possible approach, the early algorithms available to the patients uh, in their institution. Great. Great. Taken together, the key issues that you would like to communicate to our audience at the European Heart Journal today, what is your message? So I think uh, we have made enormous progress in the management of patients with STEMI. However, to a much lesser extent, 
to the management of patients uh, presenting without the clear ST segment elevation in the ECG. Now, with the near universal availability of high sensitivity cardiac troponin assays, we are able to diagnose patients with NSTEMI nearly as rapidly as those with STEMI. And it's my real, real hope that the much earlier diagnosis will be accompanied by, again, similar uh, large benefits regarding patient outcome because we will now be able to start the beneficial treatment many, many hours uh, earlier as we have been in the past. Superb. And still, of course, people have to think of that it could be a coronary syndrome. That is what we learn at our institutes and some, uh, sometimes from referring doctors. They just come too late, yeah. unfortunately. Christian, thank you very much for sharing your insight with us. It was very pleasant. Thank you very much. Very knowledgeable. Uh, thereby, we conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christian.